be covered. Tell voters that premiums should be higher. Sounds like a great losing agenda for the 2014 election. Joining me now is Vangela Rye and Ed Rendell. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you, Rev. Governor Rendell, uh, at, this, at this rate, will Republicans still be trying to repeal Obamacare 50 years from now? <laughs> Perhaps, although I think when President Obama leaves office, it'll end. But, but it, it's so ridiculous, Trev, and, and it's not just b b on a substantive basis. I think the American people have a basic sense of fairness, and even if they disagree with the president's health care plan, they know that, A, as you said, this is a waste of money, and, B, if they shut the government down because of this, I think they risk an incredible wrath coming from the average American, even Americans who don't necessarily like the, the right. president's health care plan. They don't want politics like this. It's everything that's bad about politics, and it is, in fact, showing people who the Republicans are. Sure, who they really are. They're mean-spirited, and they don't care about doing anything to help the people of this country. You know, Angela, uh, the right-wing brain trust mm -hmm. is all in agreement with shutting down the government over health care. Sarah Palin says it's common sense. Sean Hannity says it's a no-brainer. But the Washington Post reports a government shutdown wouldn't affect the impl um, uh, implementation of Obamacare at all. That according to a new Congressional Research Service report that says that. Now, the question is, so the GOP's big plan is to take down Obamacare is really a dud. Well, there's no question about it. The Congressional Research Service is the research arm of Capitol Hill that is not by any means partisan, not by any means biased. So for them to come out with this report saying that this will in no way impact how Obamacare is, is rolled out and the fact that the implementation will continue even with their strategies to try to defund it. Yep. It's insane to me that even at this point you have folks on the right who are saying we will hold, we'll hold out and we will defund the government just yep. to simply try to shut down Obamacare even more, despite the fact that they're, they've taken all these votes. So they'll say, this is crazy over here, but it's not crazy for them to take, like you said, 50 years later, will we still be voting to repeal Obamacare? Maybe not, but 50 votes later, it seems like that's certainly their strategy. No doubt about it. But, you know, a few Republicans, uh, Governor, has even said they would refuse to help their constituencies uh, with questions about signing up for Obamacare. But interesting, Paul Ryan had a different take. Look at this. Are you going to be helping constituent services much in the way with Social Security and Medicare? We always help any constituent with any problem they have with the federal government. There, there's no, including Obama. Anybody who has a problem with the federal government, we're going to help them because that's my job. Now, I, I, first of all, I, I, the weight of this, I imagine some Republican lawmakers saying they will not help their constituents in getting and applying and doing what is necessary to get health care. At least Paul Ryan, who I don't usually agree with, at least he wouldn't go this far or that far. But there are actually some legislators, some lawmakers, governors saying they won't help their constituents get health care. Well, it, it, that's not surprising to me because you've got some Republican governors, usually the ones who are interested in being president or vice president, who are refusing to take the Medicaid money, even though that's not going to save a dime. That money's just going to go to some other state, and their taxpayers are going to be paying for it. And in Pennsylvania, for example, 600,000 people will not get Medicaid coverage if the governor doesn't accept the Medicaid money from the federal government. And $1.2 billion a year will not come into the state, and our hospitals will, use, will lose $100 million a year. Now, that's a, an incredible price to pay for an ideological stand. But the clock is against the Republicans, because let me show you, uh, Angela, what I'm talking about. On New Year's Day next year, Election Day 2014 could see uh, that Obamacare will go into effect on New Year's Day. On New Year's right. Day, they, we will have lower premiums, more people covered, lower drug costs for seniors, coverage for pre-existing conditions. Now, how do the Republicans run against that on Election Day in November when just around the corner all of these things will go into effect? How do they run against that, Angela? 
They really can't, Rev, and that's just the thing. They are so anti-Obamacare. They've gone from the no party to the hell no party, and it's it's so extreme. They are forgetting the fact that American people vote by their pockets. They vote on tax credits. They vote on whether or not they've been able to save money whether or not they've felt any type of economic relief. And what's even more outrageous is, I don't know if these folks forgot what happened in their Capitol Hill orientation or for some of the newer members like Cruz, if yeah. they missed it all together, but the Hill works by you pass a bill, it gets signed into law, and then those bills have to get reauthorized. That's true. So instead of repealing them, why aren't they focusing on an amendment strategy when it's time to reauthorize this measure? It's simply ridiculous. They're not focused. We've got things like immigration yep. reform, gun control, and all these other things things that really need to take place. I'm and gonna have to leave it there, but you you're right. Thank you, Governor Rendell, Angela Ride. Thank you both for your time tonight. Thanks, Rev. Have a good night, Rev. Still ahead, we'll go inside President Obama's new strategy for beating the do-nothing Republicans and moving the country forward. You might be surprised by what he has up his sleeve. Plus, there's new garbage talk on race from the right-wing pundits. I have a reality check on what's actually important. Stay with us.